Is this illustration possible? Explain why or why not. So come up with uh, your own answer. Hit pause uh, while you do that. And then uh, come on back when you got it figured out. So I don't know what you came up with, but I don't see any possible way where this can work out if the blue squares are positive one and the red squares are negative one. How can two positives be the same as 11 negatives? Um, two negative 11. I mean, that's basically saying 2 equals negative 11, which is not true. No. Does not make sense. Not possible. All right. Well, today we're going to look at solving equations with x on both sides. Uh, there's some pretty special situations involving x occurring on both sides of the equation that we have not yet seen. And that is what's going to show up today. So sometimes what can happen is when you are solving an equation, you get x on both sides of the equation. And you say, hey, I need to get both x's to the same side of the equation. Uh, and so you, you subtract one or whatever uh, to cancel it. And instead of it just canceling on one side, it cancels on both sides. And there's no x's left anywhere in the problem. All the x's are gone. Uh, so that's what I mean when I say when the x terms on both sides of the equation drop out. It's two possibilities. The first possibility is that the x's are gone. You could be left with a true statement, something like 4 equals 4, just as an example. Uh, if that happens, it means that there are infinitely many solutions. It doesn't matter what the x is because you have the exact same x's on both sides of that equation. They're going to like, they're always going to cancel each other out. You could make x any number you want. Okay. So infinite number of possibilities, x could be 1, it could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 5, and so on, right? So to represent infinitely many solutions, we just use the infinity symbol. Um, there's not an infinity symbol on the keyboard, so on WAMAP, we type it with two lowercase o's, like in the middle of the word look. Okay, two lowercase o's, not zeros, the letter o. The second possibility is you might have the x's cancel each other out on both sides of the equation, and you end up with a false statement. Just as an example, negative 1 equals 8. Well, that doesn't make any sense. That's preposterous, just like we saw in the do now, right? Positive 2 and negative 11 are not the same thing. They are not equal. Okay, if that happens, it means that there are no solutions. It doesn't make any difference what number you use for x. It will never, never work. No solutions. Okay, mathematicians say that the solution does not exist. Since there is not a solution, it does not exist. And into WAMAP, you would type the acronym DNE, which stands for does not exist. No periods, no spaces, uh, uppercase or lowercase, doesn't matter, but DNE. All right, let's take a look at a couple of examples so we can see this at work. Um, so we've got an equation, 2 plus 6x equals 6x minus 11. Um, I illustrated this with algebra tiles. I think this makes it pretty pretty clear uh, a lot faster with the algebra tiles. So if I have my teeter-totter is balanced on the, the left side, I have two positive blocks and six x's. On the right-hand side, I've got the six x's and 11 negative blocks. Okay, well, if I look at this and say, okay, so there's six x's on the left side, there's six x's on the right side, what if I were to just say, you know what? Those x's all cancel each other out. I got six x's here, I got six x's there, and poof, they're gone. Then that's what you saw in the do now, right? Positive two, negative 11. There's no way that balances. Okay, so this is gonna be a situation where there is no solution. The solution does not exist. Okay, when we look at this from a purely equation standpoint, you'd say, hey, I have x is on both sides of the equal sign. I want to get rid of this one, the blue 6x. Uh, I want to move all my x's to the left side of the equation. So if I have six x's in this equation, I need to take them away. And I have to do the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. Okay, I have positive 6x in green. Subtracting 6x gives me nothing. Positive 6x in blue. Subtracting 6x gives me nothing. 
this 2 comes down, this equal sign comes down, and this negative 11 comes down. Ah, where'd the x's go? There are no x's left anywhere in this problem. No x's on the green side, no x's on the blue side. And what we're left with is a preposterous statement 2 equals negative 11. Well, that is not true. 2 does not equal negative 11. So there are no solutions. The solution does not exist. We could just say D and E. It doesn't matter what we use for X, it just will not ever work. It's an impossible situation. Here's a second example. So uh, with, sorry, that is the same one. Here's the second example. So I got eight minus two X on the blue side uh, equal to negative two X plus eight on the green side. Again, let's take a look with the algebra tiles first. Uh, so here's the same equation. So eight blue positive blocks, two negative x's. The x's are negative x's are yellow, and on the other side, two negative x's and eight positive blocks. So you can kind of already see it's the exact same thing on both sides, right? So if I were to say, you know what, I got two x's on the left side, two x's on the right side, they cancel each other out. If I get rid of them, poof. Then what's left? Eight boxes here, eight boxes there. We well, would say, yeah, obviously. 8 weighs the same as 8, right? 8 equals 8 this is like, duh. So this means the x's are basically irrelevant. Sometimes we, uh, in math, we have the word extraneous. The x's don't make any difference. They are not actually relevant to the solution. Whatever you use for x, it's going to be the same on both sides of the equal sign and cancel each other out. Okay, from a purely equation standpoint, here's what that would look like. You'd say, hey, look, I have negative 2x on the green side, I want to cancel that. And so in order to cancel the negative 2x, I need to do the opposite. So I'm going to add 2x, and then I have to do the same thing on both sides of the equation. So in the x column on the blue side, I'm going to put plus 2x also. So I had negative 2x in blue, I added 2x, that gives me nothing. The green side, negative 2x plus 2x, that gives me nothing. And then this blue 8 comes down, this equal sign comes down, and this green 8 comes down, and we're left Sorry, this green, green, green x8, sorry, the green 8 comes down. And so the resulting step of our work shows there are no x's left any place in the whole equation. It just says 8 equals 8. Okay, so the x does not make any difference to the solution. Again, it's extraneous, it's superfluous, it's irrelevant, doesn't make any difference. English has so many words that mean the same thing. And what we're going to say for our solution is that there are infinitely many solutions. And, whoops. It's not that the answer is actually the number infinity. Infinity is not actually a number. It's that there are many 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 solutions every single number in the entire universe is a solution x can equal one that's totally an answer x can equal two that's totally an answer x can equal three is an answer x equals four and so right and so there's an infinite number of things which are actually solutions so we're not going to say x equals infinity that does not mean the same thing x does not equal infinity x equals anything we want it to be the infinity is just representing that there are so many solutions we can't count them and in um into WAMAP since there's no infinity symbol you would just type two lowercase o's because when you type the two lowercase o's right next to each other it's the closest we can get to an infinity symbol that's what the computer uses okay one last equ uh, example here this is a little bit uh more elaborate as far as the original equation goes. So I've got on the red side 7 and parentheses h minus 4 and on the green side 7 h plus 17. So again I am going to start by looking at this with the algebra tiles. Okay so I have seven groups. Right? Each one of these groups has an x minus 4. I've got an x and four negative blocks there. So x minus 4 there's seven groups so that is seven parentheses x minus 4 
On the other side, I've got seven individual X's and 17 of these um, positive tiles. All right, so what I want to do first is expand the groups. I mean, I kind of already did that in the illustration, but let's think about this. So if I have in the equation, it says seven, and then the parentheses just mean I have groups. The group is X minus four. If I expand that, you can see it in the picture. I've got uh, these seven different groups. Each one has an X and four negatives all together. There's like seven X's and there's uh, 28 of these red boxes. Okay, so I can get rid of the grouping symbols. I don't need those parentheses. Poof, they're gone. And then uh, because I've expanded all the groups, instead of just saying seven multiplied by the group, there are the actual seven groups. Then uh, I can see on the left side, there are seven X's. On the right side, there are seven X's. And so we know that the seven on the X's on one side is going to cancel the seven X's on the other side. And then what we see is all of these red negative boxes are supposed to be balancing all of these blue positive boxes. Uh, so I got 28 negatives and 17 positives. That's not the same thing. How can 17 positives get balanced by 28 negatives? No way. So this is not going to have a solution either. Let's take a look from the equation standpoint what this looks like. So the first thing I want to do is distribute that 7 right there. I'll use some different colors here. So I'm going to multiply the 7 onto the H, and I'm going to multiply that 7 onto the negative 4. So 7 times H is going to be 7H. I want to make sure that's in my boxes column, uh, or that's what I'm using for my variables. So 7H goes in the, the stripey column. And then multiply the 7 on the below the black arrow. 7 times negative 4 is going to be negative 28. That's going to go into the star column, what I'm using for my constants. And on the green side, I've not actually done anything. So I'll just bring all of that down to the next to the next line. And then I'm going to say, all right, I have seven H's. On the green side, I'm going to move, and also the seven H's on the whatever color that is now, purple and black and red side. Uh, I want to bring all my H's together on one side. I'm going to move everything to the left. It's not the only choice that we could have made, but let's just go with this. Let's say, hey, I want to get rid of these seven H's. So I'm going to subtract. That would be the opposite. I have to do the same thing on the other side of the equation. Oops. So 7h is subtract 7h, those cancel. 7h minus 7h, that cancels. And then here's what's left. I've got the negative 28 comes down. Equal sign is still here. The positive 17. Negative 28 equals 17. Yeah, that's not true. Negative 28 is not the same thing as positive 17. We already talked about that. So there are not going to be any solutions. If there are no solutions, that means the solution does not exist. We can abbreviate that D and E. 